So I'm currently on a very relaxing work trip for about three weeks and that has given me the time to produce a number of videos I've been meaning to do for a while. This morning I took a drive to a location about an hour away from the town I'm staying in to obtain another ISS Transit of the Sun. And there you can see my car parked on the side of the road and the P900 camera on the tracking mount fitted with a solar filter. And this was literally in the middle of nowhere. But once again, thanks to the ISS Transit Finder website, I was able to pinpoint the precise location to see the ISS move directly in front of the sun. And there you can see the details for today's transit, which occurred at 11.17 and 51.54 seconds local time. Now, I'm not going to give you the precise location because I plan to run a small contest tomorrow with a few additional clues to see who can actually calculate where I am located in Australia. So here is a still frame from today's capture. And as you can see, the orientation of the ISS is quite different to how it appears in many other transit videos on YouTube. Clearly, the solar panels were oriented more down towards the Earth, and that is why we are not seeing them in profile. Now, I must give a huge shout out at this point to my friend Wes Wally, and we communicate occasionally through WhatsApp, and I was telling him about this transit and showed him a preview of this video. And He's one of the best researchers I have encountered because he very quickly came back with a link to this video of the ISS passing over Australia. And we can see in the live feed that the solar panels were in fact directed down towards the ground. So that fits nicely with my own personal observation. And if you haven't seen Where's Wally's channel yet, please check it out. He just produced another brilliant video about the Himawari 8 being a gigantic flat earth killing machine. And the level of research and detail he goes into is quite impressive. I'll post a link to this video in the description below. So I'll play the footage from the capture today. And as you will note, it is timestamped with audio. By dialing 1194 on a mobile phone from anywhere in Australia, we will get an audio readout of the precise time. And I did that so that you can see just how accurate this prediction was on the ISS Transit Finder website. Here is just another photograph taken of the monitor of the P900 just prior to starting the recording of the video. So the video will play in real time a couple of times and then I slow it down and also enlarge the picture so that you can see the ISS more clearly. Please enjoy.
So I find it quite incredible that there are still some flat earthers out there trying to convince people that the ISS is not real. We can see it with our own eyes. On clear nights, somewhere around the Earth every day, the ISS is visible. In addition to that, it can be seen transiting the sun or the moon and has been done so many times, as you see in this video. Flat Earthers themselves have done ISS transit videos. So what's next, guys? Are you going to try and convince us that the Tooth Fairy is still real? So on that note, I'll leave you with some additional footage taken with my telescope at home in Sydney of the geostationary satellites. And you will see that I turn off the tracking sometimes on the telescope. And that causes the satellites to remain stationary in the frame because they are geostationary satellites. They remain fixed in the same position in the sky night after night. Now, a question I have for flat earthers, these lights that can be easily verified by anybody with a modest telescope are really up there and they can be predicted accurately with modern planetarium software. However, there is absolutely no record of them on any star charts prior to the 1960s. Don't you guys find that interesting?